Uh, hello everybody. Um, today we're going to discuss the uh, second part of the hip and thigh ultrasound in adults uh, regarding the uh, pathology. Uh, the most common pathology seen in the hip ultrasound uh, is the joint effusion. Uh, this is the femoral uh, head uh, and neck, and this is the anterior recess where, where we see the effusion. Uh, here, this is the normal side. Uh, the normal right side, uh, there is no joint effusion here, while on the left side, we can see a uh, clear hypocoke uh, joint effusion. We can measure the anteroposterior diameter just uh, for documentation uh, of the measurement in cases of follow up to assess the progression or the regression of the case. Uh, also, a post-therapeutic injection in the joint uh, targets the same uh, site. Then um, uh, we've got to exclude uh, septic arthritis. Uh, this is an example of a joint effusion. We can see echogenic debris inside, suggestive of an infected uh, fluid. Uh, also, we can see um, synovial hypertrophy with increased vascularity on Doppler study. Uh, in cases of um, post uh, hip replacement uh, infection, uh, the infection can uh, form tracts that can reach the subcutaneous tissue, forming large abscess. Uh, fractures can be also seen by ultrasound. On the right side here, uh, this is the uh, the head and the neck, uh, normal appearance. Uh, while on the left side, uh, there is a clear defect in the, uh, on the cortex, uh, denoting a fracture. Uh, on X-ray, we can see here that there is a, a trans cervical uh, fracture uh, noted. Uh, another example uh, is the avulsion fracture. Uh, this is the anterior inferior iliac spine, uh, and where the rectus femoris uh, uh, muscle uh, is attached. Uh, we notice here that there is a uh, an avulsed bony fragment with a regular bony outline. Uh, in pediatric uh, age group, it's important to do a um, comparative study just to see the normal outline of the of the of the bone. Um, if we notice any irregularity, this can uh, denote uh, uh, multiple micro uh, traumas. Um, this is an example of a, a, a joint that shows uh, some joint effusion. Uh, and we um, can assess the labrum here, where we notice a small uh, labral tear. Loose bodies can be also seen by ultrasound, the joint. Uh, calcific tendinopathy is a very common pathology also, uh, noted um, sometimes after uh, post-traumatic uh, uh, injuries, uh, particularly in athletes, uh, or uh, in uh, cases of calcium uh, deposition uh, um, uh, in the tendon, in cases of uh, uh, old age patients, uh, we can see, where we can see uh, calcific tendinopathy, uh, particularly in the, um, the region of the gluteus medius uh, tendon. Uh, a faster view uh, from the previous study uh, for the normal anatomy of the upper uh, uh, posterior thigh, the hamstring region. Uh, we see here the martyrs bend sign of the sciatic nerve. Anterior teeth is the um, common tendon of the semitendinosus and the biceps femoris. Uh, the semimembranosus uh, tendon is uh, noted here, and this is the adductor magnus uh, muscle. So, uh, in this example for tendinopathy, uh, this is the uh, healthy side, the sciatic nerve, and this is the side of the uh, common tendon. Uh, on the diseased side, uh, this is the side of the uh, sciatic nerve. We notice here that there is increased thickness of the common tendon, uh, which is also noted in LS scan. So, uh, um, knowing the um, anatomy of this area can just make us um, pick up uh, small or subtle uh, pathology. Uh, bursitis can be also diagnosed by uh, ultrasound, uh, where fluid is seen filling the potential space of the bursa. Uh, there are three uh, bursae at the hip region, which are the ilusos, the trochanteric, and the ischogluteal. Uh, 
um, this is the site of the Iliosaurus uh, uh, bursa. Uh, in cases of bursitis, the float uh, will be seen tracking lateral to the common uh, femoral vessels. Um, at the site of uh, examination of the gluteus medius and minimus uh, tendons, um, the, uh, uh, the trochanteric uh, bursa uh, or bursitis can be seen. Uh, while at the site of attachment of the hamstring uh, tendons, uh, an ischio-gluteal bursitis can be detected. So this is an example of the region of the common femoral artery and vein with a cystic lesion seen surrounding them. Um, by color Doppler, uh, we can just differentiate the vessels from the uh, bursitis, which is uh, so, uh, to some extent being lateral uh, to the vessels. Uh, this is another example of the trochanteric bursitis, and this is the gluteus medius tendon. Uh, muscle tears uh, is also one of the most common pathologies, uh, particularly in athletes. Uh, this is an example of the uh, rectus femoris muscle, so showing an uh, intersubstance uh, partial thickness tear causing an hematoma. Uh, another example here is uh, noted uh, showing a calcific lesion uh, within the vastus intermedius muscle compared to the normal site, uh, denoting an old calcific uh, uh, insult. Um, uh, another example of the sports hernia or adductor tendinopathy. Uh, this is the adductor longus, adductor brevis, and adductor magnus uh, muscles with their attachment uh, uh, in the pubic tubercle. Uh, in this case, here we can see a val an avast segment with the thickened hypoechoic tendon, denoting uh, adductor tendinopathy. Um, also, um, uh, uh, chronic or old muscle tears can be seen where we can see the muscle uh, fibers retracted without any surrounding collection. In this case, uh, here we can see a surrounding fluid denoting that the, uh, uh, the insult is a recent one. Uh, another example of an intramuscular hematoma is also noted here. Uh, this is an example. Uh, this is an example here of a uh, chronic tear in LS, where we can see the retracted fibers in the muscle within the out distal part. And this is uh, an example or a TS view for the same lesion within the out distal part. Um, also, muscle strain and the delayed onset muscle soreness. Uh, is another finding uh, in the setting of the muscle strain the patient usually complains of the pain during the exercise uh, for example here this is an uh, example of uh, the um, biceps uh, femoris muscle uh, short head and long head uh, examination this is the healthy side and this is the affected side we notice here that there is a subtle increase in ecogenicity of the fiber of the of the muscles with intact uh, fibrillar pattern and no intramuscular hematomas uh, this is a classic appearance of the uh, muscle uh, strain, uh, while in cases of uh, muscle soreness, uh, known as delayed onset muscle soreness, usually patient uh, complains of the pain. Uh, the next day after the exercise, uh, we can see also there's uh, a marked increased extremity of the muscle that may be seen also uh, uh, hypertrophied or bulky a little bit. So uh, the, the onset of the complaint uh, makes uh, usually the difference between the two uh, with the increased inclusionicity uh, more noted in the uh, cases of the muscle soreness. Uh, patients with uh, myositis uh, usually have the appearance of uh, muscle uh, edema similar to the edema seen in the subcutaneous tissue uh, um, uh, with the mild increased vascularity. Uh, so uh, the, this cobblestone appearance of the uh, intramuscular uh, edema uh, helps us to diagnose the myositis. Uh, fibrosis um, is seen uh, as an echogenic uh, lesion uh, within the muscle fibers with history of uh, old uh, insult. 
uh, also classifications can be seen as in the previous uh, example noted. Um, in cases uh, of patients with um, uh, myopathy, uh, what's known as uh, Hikmat scale is used um, for grading uh, the affection by ultrasound. Uh, regarding grade one, this is the normal appearance of the muscles, where we can see the uh, also the uh, shadowing of the uh, bones and outer cortical outline. Uh, in cases of uh, grade two, there is um, some uh, increased ecogenicity of the muscle with the uh, well-defined in uh, with a well-defined distinct bone echo. Uh, regarding grade three, there is. Uh, reduced bone echo, which is still uh, identified with increased uh, muscle echogenicity. Uh, while in grade 4, there is marked increased echogenicity uh, with the loss of the bony uh, shadowing and uh, uh, bony uh, echoes seen. This is an example of a muscle uh, atrophy. Uh, here we noted the increased echogenicity of the muscle compared to the uh, normal side uh, with slight decrease in, uh, in the bulk of the muscle. Uh, this can be seen on, uh, in patients with uh, repeated uh, traumas, in, uh, particularly in athletes uh, regarding a particular muscle, or uh, it can be in patients uh, um, uh, with the generalized muscle uh, myopathies. Uh, regarding the masses by ultrasound, um, sometimes it's hard to tell the nature of the lesion. Uh, for example, uh, this is a hypercoagulation with increased uh, or some Doppler signal seen within it. Uh, this is an example of a regular mass lesion also with, vascular, with vessels passing through it. Uh, the differential diagnosis is so wide, uh, it, it, this appearance may be a small hemangioma, or this one may be also a hemangioma. Uh, also, we cannot uh, exclude whether uh, it is uh, a malignant lesion as a sarcoma. So, uh, calling for MRI or biopsy um, can uh, just uh, be mandatory in these cases. Uh, this is an example of a cystic lesion by ultrasound, seen with showing some increased uh, thickness. Uh, uh, in the internal septation noted within it. Um, also, Doppler signal with high resistance is noted. Uh, uh, elastography showed that there is some hard uh, uh, areas within the cystic lesion uh, corresponding to the uh, septations. Uh, on MRI, uh, this lesion was uh, um, suspicious uh, for a sarcoma, which was proven by biopsy. Uh, this is an example of uh, a mass lesion uh, showing cystic, uh, a cystic area with a calcification. It is uh, compressible, so uh, this makes us think of a benign lesion. Uh, on uh, Doppler examination, uh, the lesion shows uh, increased uh, uh, vascularity, particularly on the cystic area with arterial and venous flow. Uh, so this um, helps us to uh, uh, diagnose uh, a hemangioma. Uh, other cases are much more uh, simple than this one, where, there, where we can see the vascular channels uh, wide with the, with the arterial and venous flow, uh, and makes us more confident uh, with the, the diagnosis. This is an example of a soft tissue mass lesion in the neck uh, with uh, increased uh, vascularity um, on uh, CT. Also, there's a the, this is seen here the, the mass lesion with increased vascularity and mild shift of the airway. On uh, MRI, uh, the lesion shows uh, fat suppression. Uh, so, um, this lesion uh, was thought to be a parganglioma or an angiomyeloma for the uh, fat suppression noted that the, in the, the fat suppression images. Um, however, uh, the core biopsy diagnosed uh, it by as an, uh, uh, an intramuscular uh, hemangioma. So, in some cases can just be debatable. We cannot say whether 
it's uh, a benign or a malignant lesion, so calling for an MRI or, or biopsy uh, uh, is a must in these cases. Thank you very much.